recording. Lesson 9, practice problems. Number 1, for each situation, explain whether you think the relationship is proportional or not. Explain your reasoning. Okay, so for A, um, we've got the weight of a stack of standard 8.5 by 11 copier paper versus number of sheets of paper. Okay, so a stack of standard. Yeah, so the, um, you know, I think it doesn't hurt to talk about this, but y equals kx, that's the standard form or format of, um, of an equation that has a constant proportionality. And, um, you know, constant proportionality has the word constant in it, constant in it meaning that it's always going to be the same. Now, I'm betting that, you know, uh, if these are just normal sheets of paper, nothing unique about them, if this is a sheet of paper, all the sheets of paper have the same weight. You know, they have the same thickness, they have the same size. Um, I've, I've never seen a pack of papers where, like, one page was, like, 20 pounds or something like that. I would say they're all the same size. So, yeah, this would definitely be, um, this would definitely be um, proportional. Okay, so it's proportional because each sheet of paper will weigh the same. That, you know, nothing is exactly perfect, but I would I would expect that each piece of paper is going to be right around the same weight. I mean, there could be small, especially if you're looking at you know hundreds of an ounce or something like that. You might find a few discrepancies or something, but it's yeah, it's it's proportional for sure. Um, <clears throat> for B, the weight of a stack of different size books is um, versus the number of books in the stack. Okay, now you can definitely tell, like, you know, in, in the picture right here, this book right here, use an arrow, that book right there is definitely the biggest, right? And it looks like, to me, just eyeballing it, that looks like the smallest. So those books, I would assume those books do not have the same weight, right? The thicker books are going to be heavier, thinner books are going to be uh, lighter, okay? And it even says in the problem that they're different size books. They're different size. So if they're different size, that's got to tell you that they are, um, that they are not constant size. And the pen just... All right, sorry about that. I, my pen just kind of pooped out on me. All right, so the like I said, every every book's a different size. So this is not going to have a constant of proportionality. Pardon me, I know how to spell, it's just my pens cuts out. So each book is a different weight. Now if we're talking about the same book, you know, if we're, if we're talking about a stack of books that are all the same author, same novel, same publisher, everything, same hardcover type, uh, yeah, then it's proportional. But these are different books. These are not the same, so there's not a constant of proportionality. All right, number two, each package of a certain toy also contains, um, also contains, what does it say, uh, two batteries. So for question A, are the number of toys and the number of batteries um, in a proportional relationship? If so, what are the two constants of proportionality? Well, I mean, um, I mean, we could have, we could have a really simple table here. We could have we have a table where it's um, where we have batteries B, 
and we have toys. And we can also have a table because there's no there's no saying what way the table has to go. Um, I just did the same thing though. Put toys where the X is. I could put batteries where the Y is. Output. Okay. <clears throat> and so it says every package of a certain toy also includes two batteries. So um, right here, two batteries for every one toy. Right. So that's got a constant proportionality of one divided by two. Right. So the K is going to be equal to one half on that one. Right. So that'll be one half, and on this one right here, uh, just make it the other way around. This is going to be one one toy for every one toy. There are two batteries, and so that's going to have a constant proportionality of two divided by one, which is two. So your k equals two. So there are your two constants of proportionality. You notice too how they're reciprocal of each other. Of course you do. They're reciprocals of each other, and that's that's how it's going to work when you kind of switch around the input output, sort of the x and y. In this case, it was a b and a t. All right. Uh, now for b, it says uh, use t for the number of toys and b for the number of batteries to write two equations relating the two variables. <clears throat> now um, the b equation, the b equation is going to be that table right there. It's going to be this table. That's going to be, and that equation is going to be b equals 2t. b equals 2t, which makes sense. <clears throat> because I think what I was doing over here is I, those represent toys. So that, let's say you have four toys, okay? So you have two, four toys. So you have 2 times 4. Okay, you have 2 times 4. And, and that is going to equal 8 batteries, right? That's equal eight batteries, and that <clears throat> that should work. So, like, if I if I do this right, you know, each one of these represents a toy. All right, each dot I'm making represents a battery. So, there's two batteries in each toy. And so, if you have some fingers and toes, perhaps you can just count those up and figure out <clears throat> what they what they equal. But yeah, that's that's going to be eight. Um, that's going to be eight batteries because that's what you're looking for. And the other equation is going to be that table. Okay, it's going to be that table, which is going to be uh, t equals one half b. Okay, so um, take this one again. That one has eight batteries. So if I do one half times eight, one half times eight, you end up with four, which is what I have there. Those boxes represent toys. So see, that that makes sense, right? That's the easiest thing for you to do, which, which is just kind of think of a scenario, think of an example, and see if it makes sense. You know, just draw a picture of it. <clears throat> Number three. Pardon me. Uh, Lynn and her brother were born on the same date, but in different years. All right, Lynn was five years old when her brother was two. All right, so find their ages in different years by filling in the table. All right, so when Lynn was five, her brother was two. So um, I would assume that Lynn is always going to be three years older than her brother, always. And so this is going to be, if, if Lynn's three, that means her brother, I'm sorry, if Lynn is six, her brother is three. If um, Lynn is 15, her brother will be 15 minus three, which is 12. <clears throat> and then um, if we have the brother's age, we can just add three. We can add three, so 25 plus three is 28. Okay, now first question here, well, I mean, we did already answer the first question, which was filling in the table. <clears throat> but for B, it says, is there a proportional relationship between Lynn's age and her brother's age? And all we have to do is just do, you know, x. we have the x and we have the y. Just do y divided by x, right? <clears throat> y divided by x. If we have a constant proportionality that is the same every, every time we do it, then this is a proportional relationship. So we just do 
2 divided by 5, all right, which is, you know, if I just leave that in that form, 2 fifths, or I can change that to 0.4, you know, if you want to change it to a decimal, 4 tenths, you do that. Um, this one is going to be 3 sixths, which reduces to 1 half, and right there that tells me that that is not a constant of proportionality, because 2 fifths and 1 half are not the same thing. Those are both simplified into the lowest terms, and um, they're different. So that's that can't be it. So I'm not even going to do any more of those. That is not proportional. So there's no consistent constant of proportionality. All right, if, if there was, then we got something, but we don't. All right, um, next one, a student argues. That's what students like to do, students love to argue. So that sounds real. So a student argues that y equals um, x over 9. All right, you. So a student argues that y equals x over 9 does not represent a proportional relationship between x and y because we need to multiply the variable. And x over y means division. That means division. But you guys know better, right? You know better than this. You know that a number divided by 9 is also the same thing as multiplying by 1 ninth, right? Just like dividing by 2 is like multiplying by 1 half, or dividing by 3 is like multiplying by 1 third, a unit fraction. So yeah, this could be, if I want to express this in maybe clearer terms, we can write this as y equals 1 ninth x, just like that. So now it looks more like a multiplication problem. It always was that kind of problem, but 1 ninth x kind of looks like, um, you know, the y equals kx type form. So I agree, and you should too, all right? I agree um, because... You know, dividing by 9 is the same as dividing by 3. <laughs> dividing by 3. Dividing. <clears throat> what am I doing? <clears throat> multiplying. Multiplying by 1 ninth. Not sure where I got those numbers from. All right, number 5. Quadrilateral A has side lengths 3, 4, 5, and 6. I, I kind of have quadrilateral A labeled right here. So there's quadrilateral A, QA, um, 3, 4, 5, and 6. Quadrilateral B is a scaled copy of quadrilateral A with scale factor of 2. Select all the following that are side lengths of quadrilateral B. Well, if it's a scale factor of 2, that means we're multiplying everything by 2. Multiplying everything by 2. So 3 becomes 6, 4 becomes 8, 5 becomes 10, and 6 becomes 2 billion. No, it doesn't. I always do that. It becomes 12, okay? Becomes 12 right there. All right, and so I'm going to look for 6, 8, 10, or 12. All right, so there, uh, that is not it. Uh, that is, that's a side length. All right, 7 is not a choice. 8 is, all right, 9 is not. And so, yeah, there it is. You got 6 and 9 were both possible side lengths of quadrilateral B.